Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Meraki Mondays. My name is Bobby Young, and with me, as always, is Dan Stewart. Today, we're going to be talking about the recent addition of a new feature in the MR series. Um, NBAR was recently added as a, an available feature to be able to get more granular application visibility and control. Um, so, Dan, first off, maybe you could just tell us what is NBAR? Well, the best way to do that is, I find, is to find literature that supports your talking points. Um, so where I like to start our conversation is going to the documentation.meraki.com site. And from here, we can type in the word NBAR. Once that comes back with our results, we can see the different areas where this technology can be applied from Meraki's documentation place. From here, we can see a little bit about what it is integration with, in our case, we're going to talk about the MR series access points, and even the new MS390 gets in the game here, along with uh, the MX platform as well. So if we look at the NBAR integration itself as a general statement, like Bobby mentioned, uh, it really is a Cisco innovation to help with advanced application visibility and control by providing a set of classification and identification of over 1,500 applications, categories, uh, ports, different identifiers that we can use to provide a much more granular view of, well, the applications that clients are using when looking at the Meraki dashboard because one of the first things you see every time you log into Meraki is that client status page. Andrew met with the clients and the applications that they're using, but there's probably some times where you're looking at that data saying, well, what is unclassified traffic? What is encrypted traffic? I wish I knew more about exactly uh, where these users were going and what they were doing on a more uh, specific level. And the NBAR and it's, thousand plus application support will gain you that visibility and we're going to see how that works when it comes to your access points going forward so as we can see from this documentation there's some advantages specifically in just the meraki engine by itself so we're going to look at two different screen grabs here of without nbar the i guess we'll say the traditional view of your client application details and then with nbar enabled and this page is good but let's blow it up into a slightly bigger uh, easier to see uh, view this client view application detail page is something that we've all been familiar with in the pre NBAR integration days where we're going to have this generalization of secured web traffic or UDP traffic or uh, any type of very simplified view because the data points that Meraki was able to pull in wasn't able to classify the traffic into any real granular levels. So if we look at jumping ahead when we've integrated NBAR technology into the various points of our in, in Meraki environment, we can see that now the application detail list gives you much more in terms of applications and qualifications that you can see respective to your client's whereabouts. So if we look at the original one just for comparison, a very finite list with NBAR, a much more detailed list. And obviously this will scroll further as we're only in what the letter A here in the applications that can be supported or seen within the network, um, even at small uh, category usage of, of data coming across your network. So it's highly valuable once that's enabled across our environment. So that was definitely something that I've noticed over use, utilizing Meraki in my home network, as well as you know the uh, the, the labs we have set up at Ingram Micro, um, was that it it would categorize and you'd still have those groups, you know, where you'd have a big listing of you know VoIP traffic and it would tell you whether it was VoIP traffic that was specific to you know Google Classroom or you know WebEx or some other uh, you know video platform, um, but as you mentioned, there was a huge amount of traffic that kind of was not really caught within that. So kind of miscellaneous traffic or the kind of this lump that says, we don't know what this is. 
Yeah, and this is just another way to show that how the Cisco innovations and integration into the Meraki ownership really helps uh, bring these two worlds together, you know, continued year after year. Now, there are some prerequisites to enable this type of traffic. And as we see this on different platforms, uh, whether it be a switch, a uh, firewall series, and now specifically we're going to talk in this episode about the MR platform, if we look at the hardware and software requirements, we'll focus on the uh, software support, or in this case, the, the firmware support of the product. Um, these are really recent uh, introduce, introductions of the uh, software, where they might even be in a, a pre-general uh, availability state to get them. So when you're looking for this on your dashboard and you may not see that it's a present, uh, you want to first look at, well, what is the uh, software or firmware that is deployed in my environment? Are we at those levels? And do I want to take the potential uh, risk of a, a maybe non-general release software might be into my environment day one. So maybe testing this out first in an area uh, of your um, environment or a lab uh, to get yourself acclimated might be a good step in the right direction. Good thing is our environment is in a lab, so we can do this without much problem. So Dan, if you if you had to uh, if you had to guess, why now? Why why is this not something that you think they might have integrated earlier? I noticed that the the MS390, uh, which if you guys aren't familiar, is is the uh, the Meraki switch that's kind of based off of well, based off of it basically is you know Cisco hardware with Cisco ASICs and everything you know that kind of comes with the the Catalyst series, um, utilizing Meraki on top of that 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 same hardware. Well, I think you're you're pointing to it right there. So the MS390 is a, really a next generation switch in Meraki's hardware. Uh, landscape. It's got Cisco's custom ASIC in there. It's got a you know hardware to run this type of application you know load into the uh, hardware to deliver that software outcome. Uh, same thing with the access points. If we look at the dependency on the access points, only the Wi-Fi six generation of access points can support the NBAR integration. Um, so it's something that we did not see the availability of in prior hardware likely due to the lack of uh, its performance, horsepower, or capabilities to take on this type of granular uh, visibility into your environment. So that actually segues us nicely into the um, MR access point specific version of this type of dialogue, because wireless is really the most used way that our client devices are getting onto the network so it just makes sense to kind of look at that as our way to the visibility platform of everything that's coming through on the wireless environment now meraki documentation does a great job here because they kind of put that same information in front of you of what it is what you can achieve, what the expectations are, and specifically to the wireless environment, we get more of that granular uh, detail specific to the MR deployments. Now, some of the caveats we are going to see again is that you must be on the latest software, 27.x and beyond. You must have a, a network environment where every access point in your network is the Wi-Fi 6 generation APs. It can be the pre-standard, uh, the 45s, 55s, inclusive of obviously the, the 46s and any, any of the current uh, X6 gen of the uh, Wi-Fi 6 platform, um, and can be in somewhat of a combined mode. But you really are making that bet into your environment that if you want to take advantage of this, you're all in on Wi-Fi 6 deployments, you're all in on the latest software, and once those boxes are checked, then we can start taking advantage of kind of what the screen grab says here um, that will actually showcase in our quick demo of the two different environments as they exist in our lab with and without um, NBAR because of a Wi-Fi 6 um, homogenous environment in one of our specific networks. So let's take a tour over there. Just in case you needed uh, one more one more reason to talk to your to your customers about uh, upgrading to Wi-Fi 6, I suppose. Uh, by far. I mean, that uh, coupled with, as we saw on the prior uh, page, the MS390 getting into the NBAR game, which just adds another level of um, evidence into the benefit of uh, a better switch with 
those capabilities and hardware like MGIG to drive the access points connectivity as well. So it's kind of just, you can see the evolution happening here in front of you. All this new technology really paves the way for kind of that future success. So I've logged in here uh, under our uh, business transformation center. Our network does happen to be in a uh, multi access point generational environment. I got some uh, Wi-Fi uh, 6, Wi-Fi 5, uh, even some Wi-Fi 4, the N in our environment, I think still linger around in some demo capabilities. So we definitely are not in that pure environment uh, for what we can do in our layer seven rules. So if we're on wireless, firewall traffic shaping gets us to this page. We then go to add a layer seven firewall rule. I will go to kind of the example they showed in the uh, graphic of the walkthrough guide here of email as the application. And then look at all the email applications we can choose from here. Uh, emphasis on the all, you know, this is it. Gmails, Hotmails, Yahoo, that's it. Your, your pop three IMAPs, you know, host-based. That's, that's kind of what we've been familiar with. You know, you want to categorize email, you, you, you get this and well without knowing nbar this was good enough you know it's all we knew right did we know better to this to expect more out of our systems if i switch over here to a different network this one actually just happens to be called nbar for our testing purposes is an access point environment that has a wi-fi 6 sole deployment where in this environment same way i got to the layer 7 firewall rules I'll do the same setup again, use email as my application. Now, Bobby, this is an NBAR capable environment. I got the right software. I got the right hardware. Do you think there'll be more than the eight or so categories when I click all email? Hopefully it'll be more than, than just hot. Maybe Earthlink will come back. Let's take a look here. Or, uh... Oh my, look, <laughs> let's get... <laughs> You got you to scroll down just to uh, see. Look, isn't that at beautiful? That. Wow. Look at that beautiful footage. Um, yeah. So we now have that ability to see much more from an application visibility that now the all email encompasses a lot more granular callouts when more of these specific email sources are found within our environment. So not just from the visibility perspective on the client's page, but when we're actually trying to either block these or limit the amount of bandwidth, we're able to, because we have more categories, we're able to kind of get more granular as far as what we want to control. By far. So if we want to create a policy, you know, not just visibility, it's not just AV, it's AVC, right? You want to have that control capability. So now we can see deny or allow email and not just a few categories, but a lot more. So it allow us to have that flexibility to shape our environment better, but also have the visibility of our environment when it does show up on our client page, all the applications that could be seen now are decoupled from a generalization into a much more specific uh, visibility. So now we can say, hey, I really know what's going on in my environment when we've implemented NBAR as we've seen in this demo. So this is available again on the Wi-Fi 6 access points. Um, if you do have a mixed environment now, and let's say chances of you know upgrading all of those access points to Wi-Fi 6 aren't capable, they could also then maybe do this on the switch and then basically do AVC on the switch level if all of those access points are connected physically into those switch ports. Correct, yeah, there's always gonna be some, you know, upstream conversation and a benefit to doing this you know, can extend up to the MX platform, right? So since that's your firewall, your sure. router, your main egress point to your environment, the nice thing with this one, it says all platforms, as long as they're supported by MX 16.x plus, right? So you have to look at your environment, run that new software, and then the MX platform will give you that visibility as it traverses the network. But if you want to see it at other stages, now we can apply that to the MS390, and now we can apply it to a subset of our next generation access points right at the edge of our network where our clients first communicate and onboard themselves into our environment. So it seems like a good addition. Um, hopefully this was uh, informative for everyone that stayed with us. Um, let us know if there's something you'd like to see a little bit further. Um, but at that point, what we'll do is we'll cut this off for today and hopefully see you guys on the next one. Thanks very much. Thanks, everyone.